Oh, glory to God. Raise your hand wherever you are right now. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Continue praising God. Continue praising His holy and glorious name. Can we sing that part again, Jesus? bless everybody this morning you may know that I am a little nervous but this is the first time I ever have preached in English and <laughs> for me this is coming out of my comfort zone um, something different my brain had to rewire everything every phrase word because it's not the same to speak normal and preach and Bible thermon, you know, words and all that stuff. But we're going to give it our best. We're going to give it our best. We're going to give it our best for the glory of God. Philippians 3.10. Let's see. Come on, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Let's do this. I was down there. I was like, you go before me and I go after you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Philippians 3.10. If I mispronounce a word or something, don't mind. You can correct me. I'm not going to get mad. Or if a Spanish word comes out, Sorry. Philippians 3.10, the word of God says, I want to know Christ, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. The phrase, the part that I want to focus is, I want to know Christ and the power of of his resurrection. You may be seated. I think there is no greater message. There is no greater announcement that we can give to this world than the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's no greater message at all than the gospel 
of Jesus. What Jesus did for us. What Jesus accomplished in the cross. And we all know that men, we were dead to sin. We were dead in our flesh, in our spirit. And what Jesus did was open that way for us to know that power of life, that life that he gives to each and one of us. And this morning, I don't know how this is going to come out, but this morning I want to talk to those who are weary at heart. Those who feel like life isn't going anywhere. Those who feel like they're like the sun is not shining anymore in their spirit and are surrounded by darkness. I want to speak to those that have lost the will to keep fighting. Those who are struggling with believing that God is still with them and still has a plan for their lives. You might feel like it's pointless to keep going, pointless to keep on fighting because life probably has no more meaning. Your burdens are mut multiplying more than your blessings and day by day you feel like your strength is growing weaker and weaker. You look around and everybody has abandoned you. You look around and you have been surrounded by your enemies. By darkness, life maybe have hit you so hard and dropped you to the ground to the point where you feel like you can't get up. Your friends has, have left you. Your family has left you. The ones that you might thought that were going to stick around to help you in your darkest moments have abandoned you. Sometimes we feel this way. Sometimes we feel like we're fighting alone. Sometimes we feel like we can't make it no more. Sometimes we feel like mornings are getting tougher and tougher to get up and live life. Maybe nobody came back to pick you up. Maybe nobody came back to give you a hand and they left you for dead. left you for dead nobody has came, come back maybe you feel like this woman named Agar with her son Ishmael did I pronounce it right? okay maybe you feel like her if we recall this story this woman living in a house having everything all of a sudden, her husband tells her to leave. Her husband tells her to leave because they were having conflict in the house. She grabs her son, her only son, and starts walking through the desert. The only vessel they gave her with water had ran out. The only bread they gave her in the bag had ran out. She got to a point where she couldn't no more. She got to a point where she couldn't keep walking. She couldn't, she couldn't keep on living. Many times you feel like you can't keep on living. Maybe you don't have the strength to keep on going. Your bread has run out. Your water, your resources have run out. Everything you were depending on have ran out. Imagine this woman in the desert with her only child. And she gets to the point where she can't do it no more. You don't think you're going to make it no more. She grabs her son and takes her to a bush and lays him down to die. And she turns away and lifts him, left him to die. And she went away, walked away, and dropped to the floor, and that's it. We're going to die here. Maybe you have th thought 
Your ministry is going to die. Maybe you think your life has no purpose. Maybe you think that God has no purpose for you. Maybe you think that God has no plan for you anymore because of your past. Because all your resources are gone because of what you did. Maybe you think that everything that you did is over. That's how she felt. I don't want to preach no more. I don't want to preach the word anymore. It's over. It's done. I don't want to worship. I don't want to sing no more. It's over. It's done. My worshiping's day, it's, they're gone. They're over. My ministry is going to die right here today because I don't see the sun shining over my family, over my life. There's no more hope for my kids. There's no more hope for my marriage. There's no more hope for my house. I ain't getting back up from this one. Oh, but all of a sudden God, all of a sudden God comes and reveals to this woman and tells her, get back up. God heard the cries of the child. God heard the cries of that boy. God hears the cry when you're in your room alone, in your restroom, in your closet. God hears the cry of your heart. God hears the cry of your soul. God hears the cry within you. Even if you don't shout, even if you don't let it out. But God hears the anguish in your soul, in your heart. And he says, I am here with you. And even if you think that your purpose is over, I say that my word that I spoke over you is not accomplished yet. Get back up on your feet. Eat, drink, because I am not finished with you, Jet. Oh, my God. God revealed to this woman. And she told, God told her in my own words, turn around, look. There's a fountain. There's a fountain right there for you to drink. One thing that caught my attention, if you read this passage in Genesis She had gone through that same place before. She was, she had been to that place before, but she never saw the fountain. Many times we've been in that same place, but because of our problems, because of our anguish, because of our tribulations, because our troubled heart, we don't see what God provides for us. We don't see the exit that God has provided for us. We don't see the resources that God has placed in our hands because of troubled heart. Jesus in Gethsemane, the Bible states, and it says that the disciples abandoned him when he needed somebody, when he needed someone to partner up with him in prayer. In the, in the moment where he needed somebody the most, they abandoned him and they left him. Matthew 26, 38, 38 he said, my soul, is, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. When he needed somebody the most to support, to support him. Nobody showed up. When you most need somebody to partner up with you in prayer, sometimes it feels like they don't show up. It feels like nobody shows up. In verse 56, it says, Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. They fled. They left him. They left him alone in his suffering. And sometimes it may seem like everybody leaves us, but sometimes it's just necessary so we can see the power of God in our lives. Sometimes it's necessary because God wants to work with us personally, one-on-one. We all know the story, how it goes. Jesus was crucified. The disciples left him for dead. 
The high priest left him for dead. The scribes left him for dead. The Pharisees left him for dead. The whole world left him for dead, thinking that was the end of it. That's the end of that Jesus. That's the end of his ministry. That's the end of this foolishness that he was preaching. That's the end of this guy. He was just every, any ordinary guy like everybody else that came up before him. Oh, but Jesus had the greatest comeback in history. Jesus had the greatest comeback in all history. Three days after three days, when everybody thought it was over, he resurrected. He rose from the dead. He came back to life. And this right here, this alone is the foundation of our faith. It's the foundation of our hope. This alone, his resurrection, resurrection is what sets us apart from any other religion, any other faith. Because no one else in history came back to life. Nobody else in history said, I'm, I give my own life and I take it back because I have the power to do it. No one else. This is what should give us assurance that in the midst of everything, we still have hope in our struggles, in our afflictions, because through him, we are overcomers. We, through him, we can overcome. Hebrew 4.15, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but, he, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. He went through everything. He went through all of it just to understand us. And that's what makes our God different. Because our God, he uh, understands our sufferings. It's a God that understands our sorrow, our it's a God that understands our afflictions, our weaknesses. It's a God that knows what we are going through. And that is the assurance that we have that through him we can overcome whatever we go through. Because he went through it just for us. And God is telling us this morning, it doesn't matter if they left you for dead, you are having a comeback. You are going to bounce back to your feet. They probably had you down and out. But you're coming back. You are going to have a comeback. God is going to prepare a comeback. God is going to bring you back. And through him, you can bounce back on your feet. And be positioned where he had you before. If he could do it, we can do it through him. It doesn't matter who left us. It doesn't matter who abandoned us. It doesn't matter who's not here, who's not there. What matters is that he stays with us. What matters is that he stays with us through the whole process. There's this person in the Bible that his, his life was messed up by somebody else. His life was ruined by somebody else. I don't know if I'm going to pronounce his name right. 2 Samuel 4.4, 4, you can find the story, but Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the friend of David. It says that this kid... Once his nurse or the person that was taking care of him, they found out his, died, uh, his grandfather died, his father died. This lady panicked, picked him up, and fled, took off running. It says his nurse took him up and fled. And it came to pass as she hurried to flee that she fell, that he fell and became lame. 
she dropped him or he fell. They were fleeing. And because of that, he became lame. He couldn't walk no more. Sometimes in our lives, somebody drops the ball. And it affects us in some way that we become lame in spirit, lame in life. That we can't keep on walking. And that's what happened to this guy. He became lame and his whole life became miserable after that. And you can read the word after that whenever David calls him to his table. The way he thought of himself was miserable. I'm just a dog. I'm a nobody. How are you going to call me to your palace if I'm a nobody? I don't know who dropped you in life that made you have a lame spirit. Many of us are still dwelling in the past, thinking of what people did to us. Still thinking of what your ex-husband did to you. Still thinking of what your friends did to you. Still thinking of what your parents did to you. Still thinking of what people did in your life that made you lame. And you can't get back up. And you can't be victorious anymore in life. Just because of what people were thinking of you. Just because of what people thought of you. Oh, you're never going to become anybody. You're never going to be uh, pick up that business. You're never going to become an, uh, an entrepreneur. You're never going to become anybody professional. You're never going to become anybody in life. And that made you lame. That made you uh, miserable in life where you can't get back up. Because we're still dwelling in the past of what was done in our lives. Because of what the sins we committed in our lives. Because of how we failed God. Because of how we sinned against our God. And that lamed you and can't make you get back up. That's preventing you to live the abundant life that God has in store for you. You know what the sad thing is, maybe, that that person probably is not even in your life anymore. That that person probably is up and running and doing their own thing and you're still miserable thinking about what they did to you. That person probably forgot who you are. That person probably forgot what they did to you. But you're still on the ground miserable thinking of what they did to you. Still walking, limping. Being lame, dragging yourself in life of an event that happened a long time ago. Dwelling in the past is what is preventing you to fulfill your future. Preventing you to make new relationships just because you failed in a relationship. Just because you failed in your previous marriage and your previous boyfriend and girlfriend. It's not making you live and make new relationships with people. Thinking that you're never going to find the, that right person. Thinking you're never going to find that right one person in your life. Thinking that everybody's the same. Being stuck in life. Preventing you to fulfill your calling in God. Thinking that God is not able to use you no more. Thinking that God is not able to use you like he used to use you. That you're not going to sing like you used to sing. That you're not going to praise like you used to praise. And I know you remember those days when you used to worship God with all your heart. I know you remember those days when you used to pour out your heart in praise and worship. I remember those days when you used to preach. I remember, oh, you, you probably remember those days when you used to preach the word of God. But you're dwelling in the past still. And God doesn't want you to dwell in the past. God wants you to fulfill your future and not make your past prevent you to fulfill it. Stop dwelling in the past. Stop dwelling in your hurt, in your sorrow. Stop dwelling in it. Oh, because he's going to make everything new again. That past is preventing you to be a better mom and dad, a better father, a better, a better son. Preventing you to be a better father for your kids just because of what they did to you in your childhood. Oh, because they abused you. They hurt you. And that's preventing you to be that father that God has meant for you to be. 
they might, might have dropped you. Yes, they might have dropped you. Oh, but there's somebody that's going to pick you up. There's somebody that's ready to pick you up. Oh, our God is ready to pick you back up and put you back on your feet. So you, you may know him and his power. So that you may know him. They might have dropped you, but let me tell you, you fell in the right place. You fell in the right place this morning. And if you are here this morning, it's because God has a purpose for you. If you are here this morning, it's because God has a purpose for your life. If you are here this morning, it's because not because they invited you or they, somebody you came because you had to come. No, if you came this morning, it's because you had an opportunity. It's because you have a moment this morning, a chance, opportunity given by God. So you may get back up on your feet and keep on walking. So you can keep back, so you can jump back up. So you can have a comeback. Just like our God had a comeback, ready? Oh, the devil probably thought that that was the end of you. He left you for dead. He left you to die. Oh, but God had a comeback for your life. God has a plan to bring you back up in your life so you can have an abundance in life, in your family, in your children, your marriage, your home. God has a comeback for you. Get back up on your feet. Hear the word of the Spirit speaking your heart this morning. Listen to the word of God that He's speaking to you right now. I know you're hearing it. I know your heart right now is trembling in your, in your inner soul. You're hearing this word and God is speaking to you right now. I don't know who you are. But God has a comeback for you. Don't stay where they dropped you. Don't stay where they dropped you. They probably opened up a grave for you. They prepared a grave so you can dwell in it. They buried you. <laughs> Get out of that grave. Oh, but Lazarus, they did the same thing to Lazarus. They buried him. He was done. He was rotten there was it was over his family thought it was over lord but he stinks it's been four days there's no coming back from that oh but when he heard his voice when he heard his name being called he answered to it he answered his voice and came back Jumped back up. He jumped back up. There was this man that he was already dead. He was already dead. Can't remember what book it was. He was already dead. Second Kings, I believe. 1320 story says that Elisha died buried in bands of Moabites invaded the land I'm gonna say thugs were invaded in the land robbing people killing people and it came to pass that two men were carrying a dead person and they heard that the thugs were coming and they feared for their lives. And the person they were carrying to go bury, because of the fear, they dropped him. They dropped him, but guess where he fell? It says that he fell over the bones of Elisha. And once the body touched I don't know, the grave, the ground where Elijah was buried. He came back to life. Oh, once you hit that anointing, once you hit the, once you touch the presence of God, 
Once the presence of God touches your life, once the glory of God touches your life, once the Holy Spirit touches your life, and once you once you let Him touch you, you're gonna jump back to life. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a jump, a jump start. That's what you call it, right? When you give a car cables, jump start. Some people need a jump start this morning. Some people need jump, jump, need a jump start this morning from, from the Holy Ghost. And God is ready to give it to you. God is ready to give it to you. They might have left you for dead. But God... But God thinks otherwise God thinks otherwise the word the world probably left you for dead but God thinks otherwise and he has other plans other plans for you I'm gonna ask you I know this is probably short but I want to pray for somebody this morning I want to pray for somebody this morning I'm going to invite you to get up on your feet. I don't know you, but I want to know. I want to know Christ. His power of resurrection. Your hopes probably died, but he can give it life again. Many things probably died in your lives, but he can bring them back to life. Your faith is probably dying, but he can bring it back to life. Hope for your family is probably dying. But he has the power to bring it back to life. Hope for your marriage. Your marriage is probably dying. But he can bring it back up to life. Your plans, your purpose are probably dead or dying. But he can bring them back to life. Because in him is the power to bring them back to life. I'm going to invite y'all to come to the altar. I don't know if there's anybody here that needs or wants to know Christ and his power of resurrection. The power of resurrection. Anybody that needs prayer for strength, I invite y'all to come up. Come on, don't stay in your chairs. Don't stay in the in your chairs. Come to the altar. I believe God wants to give you strength, give you healing, restore you.
did was stay still. And hallelujah, you have saved me so much better way. Thank you, Lord. Probably remember the days so much where you used to feel his presence. You probably remember the days so much where you used to be in this altar serving you go and praising God. probably remember the days where God used to visit you. It's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late to come back to the Father's house. It's not too late to come back to the Father's arms. It's not too late to come back to the cross. It's not too late. It's not too late to believe. It's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late to fulfill your calling. It's not too late to get back up on your feet. It's not too late to have a comeback. It's not too late. too late I know life has hit you hard 